open office hours, so feel free to post your questions in the chat if you don't want to unmute, but also feel free to pop your camera on, join us here for this conversation and unmute, and we'd love to hear your voices. <laughs> yes, uh, definitely. Uh, thanks, Laura, for that introduction. I am Matt Gibson. I, I love vascular access, and I love this product. I've been using it since 2013. Uh, and I'll just just real quickly, I'll share my experience with it. Uh, I, I worked in mobile vascular access. The very first time I ever used this, I, I was driving two and a half hours to put a line in. This little old lady, the cutest little thing, sweet as can be, but confused, like completely uh, confused. And um, cooperative, put the line in. It, uh, it did great. And uh, the next morning, the facility calls me and says, hey, um, can you come back down here? I'm, I'm like, what's going on? Well, she pulled it out. It was neatly wrapped up and placed in a napkin on her bedside table. And I was like, well, well, look at there. How about that? So then I put it in a, a second time. Well, to fast forward to the end, after the third time she pulled it out and wrapped it up and put it in a napkin on her bedside table, I said, we got to do something about this. This is not working. And I, that that uh, year, I had just happened to see this for the first time, the secure cath. And I was like, what was that guy telling me about that? Paul was telling me about this. I, I think I need it. So I called Paul Blackburn up and I said, can you send me one of these? <clears throat> Needless to say, I went back down there two and a half hours one way to put this line in this lady for the fourth time. And she kept it till completion of therapy uh, 10 days later. So it this was at this point in my life, I was like, this is what we need for, for these patients. However, over the last 10 years, I've been more involved and more involved with this device. And um, I see the benefits on non-confused patients <laughs> as we look at bloodstream infections and how the pathogenesis of how those, you know, bloodstream infections come about uh, with micropistonine. You know, I, I, uh, I firmly believe that we need uh, securement at the insertion sites. And if you really look into the standards of care, you'll see that exact thing that it says, we need to stabilize at the site. Uh, and for me, the stability is within the skin and this pro this product does a great job of that. So that's just kind of, you know, how I got involved in this uh, uh, along uh, over the last 10 years. Well, I guess probably over the last six years, I've been working with Laura and a lot of the videos that you you see on the on the learning modules, Art is my arm. I'm absolutely dedicated to this product and I will sacrifice my body to, you know, further the practice. So uh, that's just a quick overview. Sorry. Do we have any questions? Don't act like you're the only one who sacrificed your body. Oh, yeah. Laura has uh, sacrificed her neck. Oh, as a matter of fact, so a scar. she's got a she's got a beautiful little scar there that oh, took my about yeah. my central line <laughs> yeah thank you thank you very much she she does sacrifice her body so um is is there just real quick well let's since this is kind of uh open access or open office type of situation do we have any questions right now that i could answer that's just pressing on anyone Jen, okay don't hold, don't hold back all right, Matt, show me your best removal technique and why you like it while we're waiting. For <laughs> the, my best? Oh, you must be referring to the ninja. No, ninja. The, uh, the, I have I have uh, a, a lot of different techniques so that, you know, in this this uh, technique, can you see, are, are you looking at my uh, demo board right there? No, I'm going to pin it right now so that it's um, focused for everybody while you're talking. All right, awesome. No, I don't need to join the audio. Okay. All right. So for you guys, um, I wish I knew how many people currently use this and, and not. And uh, we're going to just assume that, you know, you probably have had little to, to no experience with uh, this um, with this product. So the uh, the removal, uh, the one of the key things about the removal is let's not fiddle with it a lot. Okay. That's the whole thing. 
And if at any point in time the patient experienced pain, stop doing what you're doing. Because it's it's really not the device necessarily that's causing the discomfort. It's how we're using it. Uh, you know, so the 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 whole removal process, and, and I'll just walk you through this from the beginning and then I'll show you at the end how I how I teach new users uh, uh, the, 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 the easiest way to do this um, um, from the patient's point of view. Um, so first thing we need to do is we need to take the top off. So a lot of people get in here and they, they want to monkey with this and they want to, they're, they're trying, they're get, trying to get their fingernail in here and get this apart. The, the simplest, easiest way to do this uh, and is a one-handed technique where all you do is you put your thumb right on top of that device and then you bring your finger over here where it says lift. You can see this right here where it says lift. You push down and lift up with the tab, just like that. It's just like opening a can of, of, of soda. Now, uh, the, how we teach it in the videos is really a, a two-handed method, which is perfectly, absolutely the right way of doing it as well. And what you're going to do is you're going to put your finger, just gently lift this up, and, and, and the movement like a hinge up and down like this should, should not be painful for the patient. So you just move this up. You put your finger down here to, to provide that base. Then you're going to bring your thumb over like this, and you can see it's right on top there. Let me turn this around just a little bit. Right on top. And then hold pressure here with your thumb and then push up where it says lift. And that releases uh, the little fins there that, that clamp that device right on. Okay. I'm going to let me make a little bit of adjustment here. Hang on just a second. <clears throat> okay. So then once you have the top off, uh, then the catheter is loose. Uh, you, you can either take the catheter out or you don't have to take the catheter out. It really does not make any difference um, with the removal. Uh, you know, so if you do leave the catheter in, you can fold the catheter over like this. You're going to apply some pressure to the catheter on this side. And, uh, and you, you want to stretch that insertion site. You put, a, you apply the pressure so that you make the skin very taut. Uh, and then what you're gonna do uh, is, is when um, you wanna fold these wings down right here, right there in the middle, uh, that blue channel is, is the crease that folds in. You need to have a little pressure. So you can do this one-handed, you put your finger underneath of, of the little blue channel and you push the wings down. When you push the wings down, it moves the feet into the L-shaped position, okay? So what you have is this is under the skin currently, and when you fold it down, you have now this, which look at the profile here. That's what's going to pull through the skin, okay? Uh, so you really have to have a lot of traction across that in that insertion oh no okay uh that you have to have a lot of traction to hold this skin stable where does the pain come from it's when people pull like this and you and you see the skin tinting or they twist like this where the the feet have literally grown into the appropriate place and you're twisting them out of place that's where the, the discomfort comes from, okay? So you, you hold traction across that. This is going to be, you fold this down like this. You want to get a three-finger hold on this. So your, your, your thumb and your, your uh, middle finger are holding the wings very tautly, and then you put your index finger over top uh, of the blue channel that's folded. And as you stretch that, that skin, and, and I always demonstrate this on people's arms, but this is a lot of pressure. You know, you really want to push and stretch 
because that that keeps the skin in place while you're pulling the feet through. Okay, so and I, uh, once you I'll once you have the Matt, I want to clarify on that point because I think it's really really an important point. And it and you're demonstrating this so that you can show what's happening with the feet. But in reality, on your patient, your fingers are very very close to that insertion site because we're talking about half. A half a centimeter, five millimeters for each leg that's under the skin, and they're only a millimeter thick. So that that precision, that smallness of it means that tautness needs to be relative and very close to that insertion site. But for this video demonstration, and for a lot of our videos, the hand looks further back. It's so that you can see what's happening. So again, translate what he's saying more so than what you're seeing. Go ahead, Matt. Yeah. Yeah, so so you know, more realistic is here. You see the insertion site. I'm trying to get this lined up just right. You're going to push into the tissue and out with your fingers. Okay, out with your fingers. That that creates that tension. Once you have the tension on the skin, then you can lay the legs down more parallel to the skin, and you're you know choke up on your device, and then you're going to pull the feet up and away from you slightly. And why do you do, pull it up and away? Because of the way the feet are formed there. You see that they're, they're, they are curved towards you, okay? So if you try to pull this way, you try to pull this way like this, you're going to kind of hook that, that foot on the tissue. So once you lay it down, you push up and away from you and the feet will come through the the tissue. Now, if if you um you know if you use this uh, often uh, and you know on a, on a, a routine, you know doing dressing changes, doing removals, this is really the preferred way to do it uh, because it's quick, it's easy, and, and it's and it's fast uh, for you as well as the patient. There should really never be more than a than a, the a pinch, like a, um, a, a maybe a staple going in. There there may be you know that much of a little pinch, but there should really never be what we would say pain. It should never be uh, painful. Um, okay, so this right that right there is the fold method. Uh, and again, if you use it all, if you use this device often, uh, that that's the preferred way. Now, Matt, um, we do you have another question? If we want to kind of stop on removal for a minute. Yeah, if you got a question. Yep, yeah. What's yep. the so the the question that's been posted says, how deep should secure cath be inserted for placement? Can it be pushed in too deep? We've never, I've never seen this device too deep. Um, and it will, it, it, the, the device, it, we place it in a standardized fashion, uh, you know, and let, let's, we'll just jump to that real quick since that's what the question is. Okay. Yep. Um, once you get, if you're placing this, I've placed my line, uh, you know, I'm holding some traction here to put it in. Let's see if I can turn it this way just a little bit. I'm holding my traction light here. I'm putting this in. I get the feet in. Once I get the feet in, I have the heels need to drop. So I angle this up and push it down. And you just push it down until it stops. It, it'll tell you when it stops. It'll stop when it's when it's ready to stop. You uh and and that's as far as you need to push it. Uh, some people it goes all the way to the to to this hub or to the the, the base of uh, of of the legs, or they may only go halfway. Um, it's not a needle. It's not sharp. It will not puncture fascia or a vein or an artery or damage a nerve. Uh, you know. So when it when you when you turn it up and you push it in. It, it, you push it until it stops, then that's when you let it go. Uh, it deploys the feet, and then you're going to gently tug back on it to set the feet. 
and and it will likely come out of the uh, or come back through the tissue a little bit and then you know rest you know generally speaking behind the skin uh, sometimes they're a little bit deeper placent i can't tell you that much sometimes it'll be about halfway down uh, on the legs. It's fine. That's that's perfectly fine. Right. I think the key is to retract, right? So once you've pushed in as deep as you can and you've deployed, you want to retract until you, you know that it's rebounding against that subdermal tissue. Yeah. So you're going to push it in, deploy the feet, then retract this until it stops and, and just give it a little tug like that. And you set the feet. Uh, and then that's that's where the final resting place of those feet will be. Did that answer your question? Super helpful is the comment there. Um, and Matt, I would like to add, it's really important for those that are newer users that the as you place the catheter in the blue channel, so keep going, that the numbers are aligned and that the wings of the catheter and the wings of the of the secure cath are in the same plane. One of the common things I've seen in some newer accounts that I've been working with is that the wings are, are crisscrossed and what happens is they close the lid while the purple wings are out of alignment and then they try to flatten those wings out, which actually creates a mechanical occlusion. We want to avoid those types of issues. So again, making sure that the numbers are, uh, the dots or the numbering on the catheter is in the right plane versus crisscrossing those wings. So, so keep showing that, Matt. Yeah, so this, if, if you can see this, the, the wings go across your screen here and then the wings of the pick are actually in, in straight view. So what we do is we try to turn it like this and if and and then as soon as you twist this like this and maybe turn it a, a little bit like that, it will kink right there. That's very common, especially on the smaller catheters like your four French catheters. Uh, there's a Provena line where you got a, a three French and a, a four French double. This is very thin wall, and that that catheter will not tolerate this motion. And, and and then with the you know spinning it uh, one way or the other. So, so you want to make sure it's straight and in line. You can have external catheter with a gentle curve, but you always want to make sure that you're keeping that plane in the closed channel in that alignment, so that that fluid plane is following the fluid plane of the multi lumens. So the wings are crossed, lay flat, and you can see I'll take my hands off of it, and you. You can see this is this is in the same plane and they they look uh, just alike. Now, can you can you demonstrate that with a little more length out, like three or four centimeters distal to the secure calf? In case maybe we trimmed it too long. This is a five centimeter external, uh, and, and and honestly, it uh, a very interesting thing that I was doing some training up in Canada at, in Calvary. And one of the hospitals up there, this is what their 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 standard method of dressing um, their picks with a secure cath was to cut this six centimeters long, so that they had five to six centimeters long, so that they had three to four centimeters past the secure cath, and every single one of them. Let me see. Let me. I'm going to put this at six centimeters here. This is six centimeters external, and they dressed every single one of them just like this. So that the, the secure calf, and this, it, it, it almost is kind of like a yin and a yang there, but this is the way that they, we, this was their standard method, and they had very, very low uh dislodgements right like they they didn't even remember the last time they had had one pulled out uh and they dressed them every single every single one of them like this uh it's it's uh but th uh this the key to this is uh proper training with the dressing change because if you have a dressing uh and you and you put the dressing like this and you leave this little uh, this little uh, the suture wings out, 
that exposes the catheter, the the spongy part of that catheter, and, and it'll stretch with with just a little bit of pressure. And once it stretch, when you pull it and it stretches, then it can it it can slip slowly slip through this right here. And you can see this. Uh, you know, say if I only got the dressing here, it's secured here. If I pull it slowly, you see how it will migrate out. Uh, and this is com this is a common thing that happens for institutions that just uh you know uh, for a new implementation or if uh, they you know, change and, dressings and the, and that that's not reinforced when the dressing style changes things like that that we see we see that type of concern but it's not common it just is common when um newer users or or a change in staff or things like that happen yeah change in staff you know the in servicing <laughs> you you just implement the the device not everybody has been in service and and you get this uh the suture wings dressed outside of the dressing uh and it's a user error it, it absolutely you know i mean <laughs> you know everybody wants to go well that thing don't work well you have to use it properly you know you have to dress the thing uh, you know properly uh or you know it, it's because this is a very different type of device than what this stat lock is because the stat lock and it absolutely does not prevent migration or dislodgement <laughs> because you can have it secured here and this catheter is it ends up out like that you know and you have this migration of the catheter with the stat lock uh in, in place um you know so uh this the secure cath it just simply needs to be, uh, you know, the, the proper education and, and dress dress the thing right, and and you'll be absolutely golden. Thank you, Matt. Okay, so I, uh, I have another. Any... Yeah, I have another question, or uh, I guess not a question, but a statement that was secondary to the the too deep question is that there was this. Uh, it sounds like they're early in learning to place, and they feel like they might have placed it too superficial. Um, so much so that one of the foot popped out while while um, when they let go. So can you can you talk about a shallow placement or too superficial and how to identify and correct it during placement? Yeah, let me show you. Let me see if I can get this to do this. So what happens is if you have ha if you Matt, have before you, before you demo, let me ask you: Can you turn your camera so it's the other point of view? Because that's the user's point of view. You're almost opposite of the user's. You're upside down, basically. So maybe if the yes. Does this look better? That is much better. Yeah. So okay. now your point of view is the user's point of view. So you're perfect. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so what what happens is this skin ring right here is very very taut. And, and maybe you have a pretty fluffy arm um, and you and, and you're kind of working in a hole. You know, if you get a, uh, you know, a 40 centimeter arm, uh, you know, there's a lot of adipose tissue there. Um, and OK, hang on a minute. I got to adjust my screen here. OK. You get a you get a, a lot of adipose tissue, maybe the veins, you know, pretty deep and whatnot. You just got to, your work, your, when you go to push on this, you're working in a hole and it's hard to see. So imagine if, if, if I'm pushing like this and I'm working in this little hole, you can't really see what's going on. Uh, you know, so that, that, in that case, you got to spread your fingers out just a little bit, but that skin ring right there can be very, very taut. And so what will happen is you'll get your little toes in like this but you can't get the feet to drop. And what happens uh, is when you let it go, these feet don't, let's see if I can get them to cross. Do you see that right there? Can you see that, Laura? Yeah. Uh, this, the feet are just a They're, little bit crossed. And I'm gonna show it, if anybody's looking at me, this is what he's showing on the device. It kind of looks like that under the skin and in any time that you have the the feet crossed there's a couple different reasons why the feet cross sometimes you're behind the catheter 
if you can see this, you know, my my cat, my feet are actually behind the catheter. They need to be in front of the catheter closest to, to the, the wrist. So if you have it down here like this and you let it go and it crosses the feet, uh, you know, you got this these feet crossed, don't take it out. That's the first thing new users want to do. They want to just take it out. But you've got your feet in, your toes in already. You know, so it may be that your heels are hanging up a little bit or one of the the feet are caught on, uh, you know, some uh, some tissue or uh, like, a, you know, some fascia, especially if it's a very um, uh, um, superficial, you'll sometimes have that. But the, uh, a common way is it gets caught on the catheter and it crosses the feet. Just fold the thing back, make a little swoop around like this, angle the angle it up again get and your then traction don't forget your traction yeah you want to you you definitely want to well at this point in time it, it, honestly laura the, the traction isn't that important whenever you got the toes in yeah once you got the toes in you can stretch that skin out there and you then go. you can push this in and it clears the catheter or whatever's hanging up yes uh, and then you can let it go so what it getting the toes in that skin ring is is you have to have good traction, uh, you know, or you won't be able to get you won't be able to to there's no space between the catheter and the skin ring, yeah. and 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 something that's that is 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 really really good uh, or uh, something that I've noticed uh, I for a if you use a reverse tapered catheter, you can push this all the way in uh, and it just takes just a split second, pull it back. And then when you lay your catheter back and you put your traction on it, there's a skin gap right there. You see the little, can you see the little hole? It's a little dark spot right there. That's what, that is actually what it looks like in skin and you stick your feet in there. When you, I mean, or when you put your toes in that in that hole, then it's just a matter of finding. You've already passed an introducer. You've already the catheter is in place. So uh, what uh, what you have to do is you have to find that pathway so the feet can follow the catheter down, and this is how you do that. Uh, if you're having a problem, you can't get the heels to drown. It keeps po pushing out on you, pushing out on you. You're going to hold traction. And this is where you hold counter. You hold your, your thing, index finger up here on the catheter and pull back with your thumb pulling, retracting down. But you can also pull some traction with that foot. You spin this around. And as you spin it, I'm going to rotate my hand so that I'm pointing those feet directly at the catheter. And then you push it in and down. Then you're going to turn this back so that it is in, in the, in orientated the way you want it to lay. And then you, you uh, deploy the feet by letting it go and you uh, give a little bit of, uh, of traction right there, just like that to set the feet. Uh, did that, did that make sense for you guys? I think that was really thorough. I want to also describe the reasoning behind the crisscrossing as Matt described. So the catheter um, density material that's the dermal density material is thicker and more dense than the subdermal tissue. The nitinol is very sensitive to pressure. It's a memory metal. It's cut and shaped in a specific way. And that pressure sensitivity recognizes that different material density. So as Matt indicated, sometimes it's pressing up against the catheter. Sometimes it's pressing up against the dermis because it's too shallow. And that's when you see that crisscross. We never want to leave that crisscross. We always want to correct it, as Matt just indicated. So um, it is part of the design to ensure that the catheter is properly placed, that the secure cath is also properly deployed. And so the two in conjunction, if you're seeing that, it's a it's an error sign. It's it's telling you don't don't leave it like this. Let's fix it. When you fix it, you you get that deeper placement 
you get then that, that again, deploy as deep as you can, then retract. That's proper technique to making sure that the secure cath is, is set, setting and resting just below the um, dermal tissue. Matt, this might be a great opportunity. I have, don't see any new questions, but to show your video clip of the ultrasound showing the feet below the dermis. Oh, do you have that? Um, I'll look for it while you keep talking. <laughs> you do that. I'm I'm gonna show them two more two more uh, cheat. Sure, you do that to get this the get the feet in. And I'll just okay. remind everybody um, on the call. All right, so Matt, I'm just gonna remind everybody on the call. Please post your questions in the chat, and I'll keep moderating this conversation. It's an open discussion. There's no bad questions. Don't be shy. We want you to ask as, as many questions as you have. So please, please, uh, again, post your questions here and we'll do our best to answer them for you. Okay, so another, so uh, um, uh, for new users, you know, getting the, the heels to drop sometimes or getting the feet uh, in into the insertion site is pretty challenging, followed by dropping the heels. So here is a cheat. Uh, this you, you, we don't teach this on the instructional main or in this the instructional on. videos because uh, it, it's just something that we when we precept we do troubleshooting and and this is a a technique that I offer uh, because it, it's it's uh, it's not needed uh, every time uh, you know but it it definitely can help. So this is this is the cheat. So your 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 arm. Your armpit is up here. Your your wrist is down here. The catheter is going to lay this way. Once you get it in, do your you know uh, push your uh, push your catheter all all the way in to stretch the skin ring out. Lay it back, and then instead of coming in from the bottom like the wrist direction, you're going to come in from the top. And this is this the 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 way the feet are are designed. You can see that these toes here, these toes right here, it, it's it's kind of springed this way. All right. So if you come in from the from in the top like this, you have it nice and parallel. Put your toes right on the catheter and push your catheter in. That helps to pull apart uh, that and, and gap that skin ring so that you can get your toes in. And the other benefit of this, this method and this, uh, this approach is that it lines up with your catheter already. So when you push it in, it actually follows the catheter down. Now, here is the, is the con to this. Uh, what happens sometimes is that you, whenever you spin it around this way, your feet get behind the catheter. That's a problem. Uh, you, 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 if you have this, you're gonna, your feet are gonna cross. It's not gonna be proper, uh, properly placed under the skin. You're not gonna be able to uh, to set the feet. So what you have to do is, does if you can see. I, I can see this right here. The feet, uh, the legs are running beside the catheter and the feet go behind. Uh, you know, whenever I let this out, the feet are actually on the wrong side of the catheter. Uh, now, this method of putting it in, it, you know, is is kind of notorious for this, but it can happen other other times. Anytime you see this, this is not okay. You do not want to leave this right here. So what you're going to do is, again, you're going to fold this back. You're going to turn the feet away from the catheter. So if you're on the left side, you rotate so your feet point towards the left, and you're going to spin this down and angle it up, push it in, release, and set the feet. If it's on the right side, uh, um, behind in the feet or behind the catheter, you angle the you you rotate the feet to the outside away from the catheter. You're gonna you know bring this around, kind of hook it around, and then the same thing and to set the feet. Uh, uh, but but getting if you have trouble getting your feet into that skin ring, 
the the upside down method like this uh, really has worked for me well. Uh, you know, uh, but remember, uh, the pitfall is the the feet being on the wrong side of the catheter. Now the other the other cheat is this: you take your introducer uh, apart. You take your introducer apart. Actually, you're not going to have the the sheath on there. You're just going to have because um, it's going to. You're already going to split that, but you're going to have your dilator. And what you can do is you take the dial di uh, dilator. What the heck am I talking about? The dilator, and you're going to do the same thing as if you're putting, uh, you know, with the traction to pull traction. Then you're going to come in with this dilator and hook that skin. And you're going to go straight in with that dilator until it, it gaps that insertion site. And you can see, uh, and it's just like threading uh, um, an introducer. You'll feel resistance and it will give. That's when you know that you've gone deep enough and it's stretched as much as it's going to be. Then you, you can come back with your, with your catheter. You're holding track, or I'm sorry, with your secure cath, you're holding traction. Uh, you're going to lay the toes in and do the same thing. If you have to turn it upside down and put it in upside down, you can do that as well. Uh, so those are some cheats that have been very successful uh, in getting the 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 uh, the secure cap, getting your toes in, then followed by dropping the 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 ankles and and uh, pushing the feet all the way in. That's that's pretty important. Do we have any other questions? I'm not seeing any posts. I'm I'm prompting folks to post responses. Looking forward to it. Um, there's again, this is an open forum. There's no structure to it. We're kind of just talking about any subject matter. So if you've got a specific burning question, you can post it. You can unmute and join us in, in here. There's no mute con restrictions. Everybody's muted by default, but you can unmute and ask your question. While I, I would like to ask the question and, and get, if you can just type into the chat, uh, are you currently using secure calf uh, um, as an inserter uh, or are you using it as a care and maintenance person? Uh, I'm, I'm just curious as to you know what the population of the folks well while there i see inserter as a response and i think there's going to be some other responses posting here as that's happening matt i'm going to take the screen from you and share that video that we were talking about oh yeah i i love that video um so i'm going to hit play uh let me know that it's showing so i'll describe what you're seeing here just in case it's not real clear and I just want to make sure, is it on everybody's main screen? Is it pinned? I, I see it. Okay. Okay. So what we have at the top, uh, can you see my, uh, can you, nobody can see my pointer, right? No, so, no. okay. All right. Mm -hmm. So Laura, show the, show the, the skin. So the skin level is going to be from the top of the screen all the way down. And you can see, yep, that, that's the top of the skin and it comes all the way down. Uh, go over to the left of the screen. You see some dark area on that screen. That is where the, yeah, that's where the adipose tissue starts. So this is the bottom of the of the skin. You can see the bright white. It To me, uh, whenever uh, she plays the, the video, that bright white horizontal uh, image is the secure cath. It kind of looks like a whale's tail, honestly, whenever it starts, when I start moving it. But that right in the center, it's about two and a half millimeters down. Uh, if you, you, uh, you and then I'm just I'm just doing like a little airplane maneuver, like moving it left to right, left to right. You see exactly where that is. It is it is uh, when you pull that pull the cat pull the the secure cath back. It sets the feet directly under the skin and you can see you can whenever i'm turning that you can actually see the adipose tissue come away from uh of the skin so do that play it one more time look to the right the the of the screen and you see that darkness right there and you see a little bit of a faint black 
right above that that uh, that secure cath, and that's where it that's where it lives. That's where it. Um, uh, whenever you set the feet, it just sets them right behind, uh, underneath of the skin. Now, um, some a couple of things that um, whenever you're doing care and maintenance, it's really important to to raise that secure calf up. Um, let me see um, if you can just keep that image right there just for a second, Laura, because I, I, go ahead and play it again. And you guys see the space there that it's in, right? It's right, it's nestled right between that skin and that, and that adipose tissue. What we think sometimes when people like, key, you know, like it's kind of like the keloid or overgrowth of that uh, endothelium, the skin cells, uh, what, what happened? What we think sometimes happens is the skin can kind of grow down around the the feet. So it's in very very important when you clean when you when you do your care and maintenance your dressing change that you raise that up at a ninety degree angle to keep uh, that tissue uh, uh, separated. Uh, you know because if if the the skin cells grow down. And and it and and it's not allowed to move. They can have a little bit of discomfort when you raise the thing up. So, what we have noticed is if if there's not proper care and maintenance on on the device, that they have more pain uh, whenever during dress change. And we believe that is that is the reason why. Also, if the skin grows down in 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 um, engulfs those feet if it's slightly twisted to the left or to the right it can cause some discomfort you know and so uh let me put this back together i'm going to show you what i'm talking about with the care and maintenance here matt your transition so whenever is, you matt can you hear me your transition is actually quite yeah. the next question is specifically issues around pain with removal and concerns around bleeding so two oh, bleed. okay okay great two separate questions, but um, it's from a, a person who inserts them, but also does care maintenance. And so they're, they're seeing pain and pain with removal specifically. Pain with removal. Okay. I, 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 let me jump to that next. Uh, so let me finish this up. So when you do the care and maintenance, raise this thing all the way up, just like that. That allows those feet to move in that adipose tissue, and if there is any adhesion of that skin cells, it, it releases it. And so this is what we we believe is really it really helps decrease the amount of discomfort, um, um, you know, uh, during a dressing change or post dressing change. What will happen after a dressing change is instead of it, it being laid in the same position, it gets twisted off to the side. And if again, if that skin cells, remember our skin cells has lots of nerve endings in it. And if it's twisted like this, it could cause a, a pinching or a poking sensation. Uh, you know, so that that's some things that we've noticed over the years uh, that, uh, that, you know, we, we have to be, you know, proper with our care and maintenance. Now, so if, a pain, patient, if a patient's reporting pain or discomfort following a dressing change, Matt, how do you assess that? And how would you correct pain based on a sample assessment? The first thing that you do, if they, after a dressing change, if they complain of pain, you know, uh, just push on this right here like this. This is going to give you just this palpation of pushing into it. It moves, it moves up and down, you know, up and down like this. Uh, and it, it's going to tell you if it's it's coming from that insertion site. The next thing I'm going to do is you're going to just change the dressing. And when you take the dressing off, you're going to notice if this wants to go back into a different position. Um, you know, and sometimes you might be, you know, there may be a, a good reason 
to have moved it. Maybe the maybe there's some irritation or something, uh, you know, uh, along this area here, and they want to move it around this way, or it's in kind of a low insertion point. And every time they bend their arm up, the 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 arm, you know, um, it it kind of pushes into the site and is creating some, you know, a little bit of of uh, of, of discomfort. Uh, you know, so this is definitely something that we we need this to be in the spot that it was put in to begin with, or it could potentially uh, cause some issue with with some discomfort. And if you leave it, you know, the first day, at, at, you know, the, they get their dressing change and maybe by that late that evening, they're, they're saying, you know, it's kind of a little bit sore. And then the next day, it's a little bit more sore. Uh, you know, if it, and if you don't correct it, then three to four days later, it, it's really sore. And, uh, you know, and we, we don't want to leave that, uh, you know, so uh, definitely do a dressing change. Try I to get it back. The pain is not a sign of, of, of um, anything, but something we need to address. So the device isn't necessarily the causal factor or something that we did with the device may have caused it and correcting it is important. So if, if I don't like the position of the device, Matt, how's the, what is the proper approach for, for repositioning it? What would you so recommend? when we, when we put reposition, uh, you know, say, say this is, it and it's too low, like you just said before, Yeah, if it's, and this is the most common thing that you're going to find. If the insertion site was a little bit too low, you know, the inserter, it was, everything, everything was, everything was covered up and we dressed it down the arm like this, uh, you, you know, then the patient starts bending their arm and, they're, and you say, oh, dang it, that's, I want to bring it out the top. So instead of in this orientation, it's down the arm. And if we want to bring it out the top this way, we don't just swing it around like that. You actually go back, you take the top off. Uh, <clears throat> you you need to just fold and turn and reset the feet. You're going to go up and down again, let it go, set the feet, and then reapply uh, your top. So that it's, you're it's, demoing this, this is on a mannequin, but in real life, you would have used chloroprep, sterile gloves during a sterile dressing change. We just want to state that so that people don't jump to conclusions that you're just opening this randomly. You're going to do it during a sterile dressing change with proper sterile technique and antisepsis. But at the point where you've identified it's uncomfortable, once the dressing's removed, if if removing the dressing resolves the discomfort, that sometimes is just a simply too tight dressing. But if repositioning becomes necessary because you recognize the orientation, the motion is a variable, then what Matt just demonstrated in terms of opening the lid, resetting the feet, reorienting it is, is the appropriate approach. So thanks, Matt, for that demonstration. Yeah. How do you prevent bleeding after insertion? And what is what do you do if the patient continues to bleed after the initial initial 24 hours? What do you recommend? What are the options? So on insertion um, is a little little bit different uh, than after 24 hours. Uh, but on insertion, what happens is we we just get into a rush and we don't uh, we don't um, apply enough uh, uh, or pressure long enough. And as soon as the patient moves their arm, then it, it, it uh, you know, and, and it, it will do that with or without a secure cap. You know, people who are uh, uh, anticoagulated, um, skin nicks are, are uh, notorious about this. If people, I've seen people be very aggressive with their skin nick. Um, and it's, there's a lot there. There's, a, there's an opening, a wound that you've created. So decreasing uh, the, the frequency of skin nicks or eliminating them. And I, I can tell you right now, I, I haven't used a skin nick in a very long time, other than a, than a tunnel catheter that I'm placing. 
Uh, you, you do have to open up the skin for it. Matt, do you use a taper or non-tapered catheter? I typically use a tapered catheter, uh, you know, and, and so this is something else that, uh, you know, that, that we, one of the benefits I think of using the secure cath is that you don't have to put a, a lot of that taper in, you know, most of the taper of these, of these catheters are outside of that vein, which I love because you have a better uh, vein to cat, uh, catheter vein ratio at the insertion site. You know, so instead of having the biggest part of the catheter in the smallest part of the vein that, that you are inserting in, you, you spare some of that, um, the catheter vein ratio. Uh, you know, so definitely for the bleeding, you, you know, um, being very careful about the skin neck or just eliminating that. Uh, the the other and then applying enough pressure, you know, to achieve hemostasis. The other thing is when you put the catheter in, I'm going to get the, let me see if I can get this angle on here. Uh, you do this traction uh, of on on the secure cath and it in this just it just almost all the time will take care of any difficult bleeding uh, issues that you have. But what you do is you just pull traction at a 40, about a 45 degree angle. And uh, I'm trying to get this so you guys can see it the best. So say this is, this is flat on this. Uh, this is, uh, you know, we're just holding this up and we're just going to pull traction at a 45 degree angle for about 30 seconds, uh, you know, 30, 45 seconds, just like this. It just stops the bleeding, you know, uh, and, and there's a couple theories of why this does. One, there, it's compression. So the, the, if there's any uh, uh, bleeding from the skin itself, these feet are holding pressure on the skin. So it just provides better uh, pressure to what is bleeding. Uh, you know, uh, we think that's probably uh, part of it. Uh, yeah. Another part could be that the bleeding is a little deeper and it, and it is it, instead of bleeding out of the skin, it just maybe oozes under the, under the skin or the tissue until it stops bleeding. And then it just, uh, and then it's not a problem, you know, yeah. because it seals think... off that, that exit site, you know, right where it, it's, you know, um, the, the junction between the skin and the adipose tissue. I think, uh, I think yeah. from my observation, Matt, you're 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 hitting it right on. It's that there's a sometimes a little micro space between the catheter and the legs, and that retraction and holding for stasis at that retraction, not to the point where you pull the feet out, but that you have that just enough tension that the legs are right up against the catheter. And then holding digital pressure right above the catheter. So it's like pressing the legs in the catheter together from the top as well. So like tension and pressure in combination brings the catheter and feet together so that that hemostasis is kind of forming right there, right where those, right under where those feet are, rather than leaving a little gap. Sometimes when we push it in and we don't retract it all the way, we leave a gap between the legs and the catheter. And then, as you indicated, the first thing the patient does after a 45 minute, you know, experience laying in bed is push themselves up out of bed to go use the bathroom. And just putting that much force on their arm is creating that pumping energy and that pumping energy just kind of breaks down any, any hemostasis that's occurred. And so it's really important that we're holding for the appropriate hemostasis, minimizing the, the causation of bleeding with, the, like you mentioned, using a dilator versus a skin neck. But by pulling those legs and catheter together, we're not leaving a gap that that blood finds an easy pathway. And so we'll see a lot lower bleeding post-insertion, a lot lower risk for a dressing change. Um, and I do think that there's other resources that are available too that can be used in conjunction. So if you have a patient population, um, let's say a high, a liver, you know, patients with liver issues, patients that are bone marrow transplant or other types of transplant patients, hyper anticoagulated patients, those, those patient populations that are at, le at higher risk may need an additional um, hemostatic agent. There's a lot of options, including glue, but again, glue by itself doesn't work if you're not holding for that initial hemostasis and getting that bleeding to stop 
initially properly. The other thing that we do have to consider is the perception. So when you implement uh, um, uh, the secure cath, um, there is a hyper vigilance of any type of complications. You know, so oftentimes it's the team that's going back to assess the the lines, uh, which may not normally happen. You know, so that the team it comes back and they're like, well, the, you know, these there's we we found three sites in the past week that are bleeding. We never saw that before. Well, the fact of the matter is you never looked because you're not the one doing the care and maintenance, you know. And so you go back and talk to the ICU people. They go, yeah, they bleed all the time. Like we, we have to just tr change the dressing, you know, bef before the end of the shift, after you put these in, because they're blah, 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 blah. They're, you know, they're, they're blood's thin. We They're on heparin. They're blah, blah, blah. <clears throat> you know, so that perception is, is often uh, highlighted, uh, but it's, but it, it is most likely the same. The, uh, the other thing about uh, the bleeding is what you are using for your dressings. Um, bio patches are, are a, a sponge uh, disc that goes all the way around, the Aegis, the, the Gardeva, the, the bio patch. They will, they function just the same way with or without a, a secure cath which they're going to catch the blood that comes out of the insertion site. The Tegraderm CHG, however, it does not act the same way because you have a little more bulk at closer to the insertion site. And what people will do is they just slap the, the, the gel on there and they don't push it around the insertion site. So it doesn't have the opportunity to absorb any of the blood. So uh, taking the, the time with a CHG uh, a dressing, a gel dressing, you push it around the insertion site and around the secure cath, and it helps to absorb uh, the, 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 the small amount of bleeding. What will happen is the small amount of bleeding, if it doesn't, if it's not caught by the, the gel, it just runs right underneath of the secure cath, right underneath of the catheter and right out the, the, the bottom of the dressing. There's not any more bleeding than what that there was before, but now it has, we've left a highway underneath of that catheter, the secure cath, right out the, the dressing. So there, there, um, there is a perception, and uh, you know that comes along with new users uh, that that it's associated with more bleeding. This is is simply not the case. Whenever if you do a pre-assess or pre-data collection of bleeding before and after, you're going to find that it is it is the same. There, there is no difference. It, you know. Um, um, but it's just a matter of, uh, of using the products optimally, uh, with whatever configuration that you, you have. Yeah. Absolutely. Did I answer everything? So far, there's a new question, Matt. Um, yeah, go, go. applying an external pressure dressing cause issues. So, um, either I'm guessing using some kind of form of, of pressure on top of the dressing to, to help with hemostasis. W could that cause issues? Would that cause issues? Um, and I have some thoughts on this, Matt, but I'll let you kind of address it first. Well, the external pressure, uh, here, here is part of the issue with a pressure dressing. People put it on and they leave it on for two days. Like, like they just never come back to, to even check it. Though the pressure dressings really are only supposed to be applied for, you know, less than two hours or a short period of time. You know, so, uh, you know, that's the misuse of pressure dressing, you know, you know, could, uh, you know, um, potentially be problematic with or without a secure cath, uh, you know, but uh, it, it, it still is going to part of that is a pressure dressing applies a little bit more pressure for a longer period of time. Yes. Uh, you know, but it's if you don't, if depending on the dressing, if you're using it, say, a CHD dressing. 
uh, you know, and and it, in the bleeding it is slowly coming out the bottom of the dressing. It isn't a, able to catch. You're still going to have the same problem uh, as 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 you did before. Um, the the uh, the what else uh, did you want to say about the pressure dressings, Laura? I but, you know, I think you're nailed it. You know, they're great for getting that initial hemostasis if you have a hyper anticoagulated patient. So um, I'm not sure the method you use, but what I see really successful is taking a four by four, folding it down to like a, a one by one or two by two, and then crisscrossing some series trips jerry strips or sterile tape on top of the dressing. So you put your dressing on, you get your, your normal dressing on, and then you kind of create a little point of pressure at the insertion site. And if you've got somebody who's really, really having a hard time stopping their bleeding, doing that to help hold for hemostasis is great, but you got to come back and observe that in a few hours. I would, I would start with four hour intervals. If it's still bleeding, then you could put another pressure dressing because you're removing it. You can put another pressure dressing on top. You can do that. What I find that's problematic is like those Curlex wraps. Like I see put on sometimes it's overkill and um, it, it's doing two things that are problematic, not necessarily problematic for secure cath, but for the vessels, you're now constricting your vessels, which can increase um you know, hemostasis in the vessels, you're, you're, you're constricting your vessels by putting that, that over pressure on it and leaving that too long can lead to higher risk of thrombus. So you could be causing some vessel damage in the process. The other thing is, um, again, putting pressure on the secure calf could then cause pressure under the skin, depending on how it's dressed, and we could see pain or discomfort come from that overpressurization. So in a short-term temporary basis for a clinical need, appropriate, but non-observational, leaving it on indefinitely, hoping somebody else takes care of it for you is not recommended in my opinion, but that's general. That's not a secure calf thing. Yeah. And I, I always use, and this is a personal preference. I always use the pressure dressing over uh, the dressing itself, because I didn't want to have to do a dressing change. Uh, right. I well, have seen change dressings prematurely if we don't I, need to. Yeah, I, I've seen a lot of people use a pressure dressing under the dressing. And it, to me, it just kind of defeats the purpose. Because if you do that, then, uh, you know, you go to change that dressing in a, in a couple of hours, and then you just pull everything off that has already coagulated. You know, it doesn't it doesn't necessarily have time to really achieve the hemostasis that's that's needed, uh, you know, so and these are extreme cases. I mean, I put I put lines in patients that have an INR of 12 or 13, you know, or platelets are three, you know, so the, these patients are going to bleed. They're just, you know, um, are, are high risk for bleeding. Uh, with any line placement, you know, not not with the not that the the secure cath increases that whatsoever. It, it's just high risk, high you know patients who are bleeding from their eyes. You know, <laughs> I mean, come on, you know, they're probably going to ooze from a, a, a you know a, um, a a needle draw or a peripheral IV stick or or whatnot. So we do have some of that issue. Any other questions about bleeding? I don't see anything else posted yet. Everybody, this is another, there's some new people who kind of joined. Some people have jumped off as we expect. If you have not had your question answered or we haven't answered it um, because maybe we didn't understand the question, please feel free to post it in the in the chat. I will read it and moderate it or unmute and open up and have a conversation with us. We're here for you. Our goal is to share with you our insights and experience and make sure that we're getting your questions and concerns answered. I see several folks that have joined our call today. There is no bad questions. Don't be shy. We're here for you. We wanna make sure we're optimizing experience and outcomes, both with Secure Cap and in general, we wanna see improved outcomes in vascular access. So please feel free to comment or post questions as you feel. You know, this might be a good opportunity. You know, one of the common questions that I get is, um, is this, you know, when people first see this, they think it's if it gets pulled out by a patient, 
you know, accidentally or on purpose, that it, it's going to rip and tear through the skin. And I can tell you, I, I can tell you from experience, uh, Laura, if you can pull that, that, um, that uh, picture up of the one that was of the site. Uh, and, and I'm going to talk through this because I want to tell you about this patient that I had. Which, it's actually up in Michigan. Which, I'll, patient, I'll be, Matt? which one? Sorry. Maybe it's the one. insertion site, the guy that the head injury guy that pulled the lines out. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. Give me yeah. a So, time. so uh, to tell you a little story, um, this I was doing, uh, you know, I've been in mobile vascular access for a long time, almost 25 years in some sorts and i was doing this line in a in a, a nursing home up in michigan and the guy had a head injury uh and uh i got called and it was just a midline and the the company you know are, said hey they pulled it out can you go do this line i said sure i can go do it put it in it was the guy was cooperative. He, you know, followed directions fine. I got it in. There was no issues. Before I even got home, the guy uh, pulled the line I placed out. So one from the hospital, one that I put in. And so I called. Don't don't be poor, don't give it away yet. Hang on, don't give it away. So um, I I Am I showing the, the right thing, Matt. Sorry. Yeah, I'm that's it. That's it. I, I called the director of nursing. I said, hey, I don't know if this is going to work or not. Uh, this guy's a head injury. Uh, he literally, uh, you know, has had pulled everything out that he had had, had um, a, a 30 cc Foley catheter he pulled out. So, you know, this, <laughs> this dressing and the secure cath is probably not going to hold if he wants it out. And I said, I have an option. This is the this is the very best I can give you to try to keep this in. We got permission to put it in because the facility didn't use it. it was, uh, and and so I went back, placed the third line, and put a secure cath in. And and guess what? Yes, he pulled the thing out. Uh, he pulled it out. And I what I want you to do, everybody that's on the line, there's three insertion sites there. Uh, Laura, and, and you see a little bit of bleeding in the, I mean, I'm sorry, you see a little bit of bruising in that, that, you know, that some of that bruising is healing because it's, it's kind of greenish yellow. It's going away type of thing. So look at the, look at that site. There's three insertion sites there. And, and, uh, I, I want you guys to look and identify just, you know, by number, Tell me which one he pulled the secure cath out of. Was it site number one, site number two, or site number three? Your best guess, put it in the chat. I'm very interested to see, you know, what you guys would say. Matt, are you seeing the annotation? I wrote number one, two, and three. I know, I know. That's why I was calling them out. Your, your great minds look alike. Oh, gosh. Think alike. The uh, uh, yeah, so so just you know, jump on your chat, everybody. I'll give you a few few minutes, a few seconds here to get. Let's give about thirty seconds, uh, you know. But what what you would anticipate if you you see a a device like this that is pulled out? Now remember that the width, the total width of those feet is 10 millimeters or one centimeter. So that's nearly, you know, a quarter of an inch in diameter uh, or in, in, you know, in length that is coming through your skin. You would expect, you know, someone would look at that and go, oh my gosh, they're going to lacerate the skin. It's going to be absolutely just, you know, sliced through and they're going to have a gaping hole in their skin that needed a suture back uh you know and and so that wasn't the case at all you can see clearly that there is no gaping skin there there is nothing that is uh you know needs to be sutured i was super fast and launched it as a poll so people can vote on poll. oh my god i love this this, this is great. All the tools. <laughs> polling survey so i don't know how many people if it should have popped up got on, how many people do we have on we got people answering. Yeah. Keep answering. We'll give it another 10 seconds and then I'll I see some one, twos, and threes here in the post. 
<laughs> so it looks like um, if I take the ones on this chat and the ones in the poll, I was able to do that really fast. <laughs> um, it's pretty tied, Matt. It's it's like 43% are saying, I'm going to end the poll here. 43% of our respondents are saying uh, number one. Uh, number two is um, about 29%. Number three is about 29%. So it looks like- so I'll, look, I'll give it to you in order of insertion. So the very first insertion uh, from the hospital was number one. The second insertion uh, I, that I placed, uh, and by the way, I know somebody's going to say, oh my God, you went in the back in the same spot. Well, I, I assessed thoroughly, you know, the, the vein, there was no damage, there was no thrombus, there was no issues and no skin issues. So I went back in number two uh, and, and the second catheter in the third site where it looks like a little butterfly, maybe, or a little kind of half crescent moon, that is where the secure cath came through the skin, to, through the skin. Uh, and so when people uh, tell me that, uh, that, you know, they're worried about this, you know, lacerating the skin and there you go, Laura pulled up a picture of literally, he just grabbed a hold of it, wadded the dressing up and yanked the thing plumb out. <laughs> this should uh, ease your mind. <laughs> That guy was determined to do it. <laughs> yeah. He just wasn't going to. So it's not, it, it's not. Uh, you know, a foolproof, you know, this guy had a head injury, didn't feel pain, pulled a 30 cc Foley catheter through his urethra, like, you know, come on, yeah, he ain't feeling no pain. Uh, you know, so, so I like to show people that so that they really, really feel comfortable with this device. Uh, the, if you if you have one more video, uh, Laura, the slow motion video of of the of the secure cat being pulled through the the demo block, do you have that? Oh, you didn't cue me on that one. I don't know where that one is, Matt. Okay, well, I I, I dog on it. I wish you had that one. So I I, I have, I have, show one have of, a, a slow motion. This one maybe for the folks that were curious about removal techniques. Why don't I show this video? This one I thought was a good one. Okay. Can I share this one? Is it showing on your screen? It is. Okay. Um. So, I, do you want me to tell the story since I I know more sure, about? Sure. Yeah. It? Tell okay. tell the story. So this is a thirty second video. I'm going to talk through it while I play it. Um. There's a little bit of camera movement, so if you get seasick, just bear with me. It's about two seconds where there's going to be a little camera movement. Am I am I spotlighted, Matt? Are you seeing me? Or are you seeing I'm the seeing I'm seeing the video, yeah. Okay, so this is uh the nurse clinical nurse specialist was called down to help. The, the primary nurse was trying to remove this and was struggling. And you can see this one's been in a long time. I think it was in over a year. Um, but so what you see here, I want you to watch actually the hand not holding the secure cap more than you're paying attention to the hand holding the secure cap. She uses her opposite hand to do what Matt described earlier in the call, and that's really hold this traction on the skin and was successful at popping it out. Um, again, it's it's very important to hold with that three finger hold. I'm going to play this part again. That three finger hold gets that orientation. The toes are pointing into that sub -Q tissue at that insertion site. She's got her hand control, and now she's using her opposite hand to really pull back that tension on the skin and pull, pull it away from the secure cath. One thing I would do differently in this case is if I knew that catheter needed to come out, if it was being DC'd because it was no longer clinically needed, I would have had my catheter out of the way. That gives a little more space at that insertion site and that can also make it easier to remove the secure cath feet because you've opened up that insertion site with by having the catheter out of the way. So I, I often recommend that the catheter is removed first, then the base. But I think what's really important in that short video there is it was difficult. They called the clinical nurse specialist down. She she approached it. She kept it in the fold position and successfully was able to put traction at the skin and pull that, that base out. Um, again, this is an open forum for everyone. We want to um, make sure we're answering questions that you have. Um, I know there's a um, home infusion nurse on the line. 
Do you have any particular questions? You're more than welcome to unmute and ask your questions out loud. Matt and I'll do demos. We'll, we'll show videos. We'll share stories. Um, it, the goal here is to make sure we're answering your questions and concerns. I know we have about 20 minutes left on our call here, 15, 20 minutes left. Has this been a helpful session for everyone so far? I ha I found the slow motion in the videos. I think it'll be a good time to play those. Can you, sh uh, can you, or can I share my screen? Yes, you should be able to take over and share. Host disabled participant sh screen sharing. Oh, I didn't, I your co-host. All right, hang on. Did you like log in and log out on me? No, I don't think so. Hang on, hang on. Sorry, buddy. I'm trying. Um, no, I, I have two slow motion videos. This is one um, with uh, just pushing uh, that actually it just pulls the whole thing out. Can you see my screen? All right. Um, not yet. Go ahead. Try it, and says, share. it says accidental. Oh, it this is not sharing. Okay. Hang on then. Screen share. So, yep. Yeah, screen share there. There. Okay. Here we go. You see it? Yep. I'm going to make sure it's pinned. Go ahead. Okay. So what we, what we've got here, let's see, there we go. Uh, this is just on a demo block. Uh, but this is me just grabbing a hold of the device and pulling it straight out and watch how the legs, uh, wait a minute, let me go back. Okay. Watch how the legs, they start to push together and the feet are going to straighten out. And you'll see, this is just me uh, uh, pulling it straight out, slow motion. It kind of pushes the feet together. It straightens the, the or pushes the legs together. It, it, it starts to straighten the feet. And once they come out, they, they spring back together just like that. You know, so <laughs> this video shows how the design of the feet and the material of the, of the metal really, really makes a difference uh, in, in causing trauma uh, to the tissue or not. That's how it's designed. It's, it's, it's designed if it did get pulled out by a patient that actually would um, um, would collapse upon itself and not rip and tear through the tissue. So there's a lot of science that goes uh, into that, you know, to protect our patients from any harm. This is the second, uh, or this this is the 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 uh, nine, what I call the 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 ninety degree. Uh, cut removal or uh, so affectionately known as the ninja move by several of the clinicians that I've taught uh, because this is this is um, the, the the second method of removing those devices is through um, uh, the cut method. So you remove the catheter and then you take a, a, a pair of scissors and you you cut right down, the the middle of this blue channel and it, it's not hard to cut whatsoever it's easy to cut uh and then you have two separate l-shaped pieces that are under the skin instead of a t-shaped that you have to fold and so this is the this is a very common way that i teach uh places like outpatient infusion centers uh, uh, that may see these every once in a while. And, and it, it just is, uh, it's a very, it, it's, it's uh, a little less um, dependent on the amount of traction that you, you can uh, apply across the insertion site because you, you, um, you create traction uh, in a different way. And what you're doing is stabilizing the skin uh, at the skin level, when you pull the foot through by placing your finger directly under this fin. So I always say the fin, the foot, which is poking out this way under the skin, follows the direction of the fin. So whichever direction this fin is pointing, so will the foot. So I'm going to take my finger here. I'm going to put my finger right over the insertion space site underneath of the fin 
And then the quicker you do this, you pluck this thing out. Now this is in slow motion. Uh, so it, it's, <laughs> I won't do the ninja, you know, like I normally do, but this is in slow motion and it shows you what happens to the foot. So you apply pressure instead of across the insertion site, directly to the insertion site, uh, you get a good hold on the, on the half of the base, and then you're going to pluck the thing out by pushing pressure onto the tissue. And you see how that foot just absolutely nearly straightened out. Yeah, and then prolapses, yep. And popped right back into place. That's the memory metal that occurs. But if you if you if you watch this again, you see that that this tissue here, the skin doesn't move. It doesn't tint. It doesn't call it. It it has no way to cause any pain. Uh, you know, from pulling. Uh, uh, you know, excessively because you support the the skin by putting that pressure on there, just like that. And I think the important part here is in real life, you're doing that so fast, you can't watch it. It's got to be fast and swift with determination. If you put that downward pressure, you're you're literally acting like a ninja. You say one, two, three, and by the word three, you're pulled out already um, because you're going to have your patient be distracted. You can tell them to cough or you can tell them to take a deep breath either way. That's more of a distraction technique. But as you push down, you need to be pulling that out super fast. And that's why Matt calls it the ninja move. Yeah, I, I have that. Just uh, give me just a second and uh, say something else. And then I'll show you that because I've got that video too. I got to pull um, it up. I was, I was actually hoping maybe Jeff could help me out. So I'm just going to ask him instead of texting him. But Jeff, I'm looking for that video that Matt Stahl shared with us of the dressing change um, the one where we see a dressing change without secure cath and what's happening at the insertion site. Do you have that video accessible that I can share it? Or if you have it easily accessible, I'll give you permission to share. I don't know. Oh, the, is it the pissing one? Yes, the pissing. I got it. You got it. Okay, good. You can pull both of those up then, Matt. Yeah. As you're talking, I thought of it. I'm like, oh, that's something good. I know our, our teams, there's folks here who are doing more care and maintenance. So I think maybe we should um, take these last nine minutes we have to talk about ideal care maintenance strategies, how to avoid pain and discomfort during the course. I do have it also. But okay, Max, go ahead. Go ahead, oh, Jeff. I'll, I'll get to which I'll one I've got. Uh, the, 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 the. You see that? Yes. Whoa. Watch that dot. Oh, there it goes. Oh, there it is. In and out. Oh. I got a barking dog. Oh, next time, Matt, we should use that as a poll question and post this on the chat. So I think that we're seeing that dot go in and out, in and out. And that's the point of that video is that without secure cath, that catheter is moving in and out, in and out of that insertion site. Um, as you can see, when you lift up, oh gosh, that neck looks really familiar. Um, you lift <laughs> up and you scrub all the way around. There's no movement of that dot at that insertion site. And you've got a nice, clean, dry, spot. The beauty of it is too, we talk about skin issues and Marcy and medical adhesive related skin injury. A lot of times what I observe when, when I'm seeing that is it's actually more of a chemical reaction on the skin because we haven't let the different solutions between the core prep, the removers, the other um, uh, skin protectants, and then tacifiers we're adding. When we don't let things dry properly, and then we close it all in with a dressing, um, we're, we're, we're tamping that moisture underneath that dressing, creating that skin irritation. So it's really important that the Secure Cath allows us to hold the device up and out of the way get each of those steps done effectively and thoroughly and letting it dry. So do your chloroprep scrub, let it dry. Do your 
Um, skin protectant, let it dry. Do your skin tackifier, your massasol, because I can say it, we're not a CE program. You put your massasol down along the border of your dressing, let that dry and get your bio patch or your other dressing around the insertion site. Everything is dry when you lay the secure cap down and that dressing goes on top. Um, and I see that when people do that more effectively, they're seeing much better outcomes in the long run. Go ahead, Matt, you've got your video queued. Yeah, I got this video up. I, this is what we call the split method uh, ninja style. Whoa! And it just comes right out, just like that. The quicker, the faster that you can do it, I'll show you again because it's that fast. Just like that. You definitely have to say, Whoa! when you do it. Whoa! That's a good distraction. <laughs> All right, I'm I'm going to ask again. We've got 5 minutes left. If there's any questions, feel free to unmute. We're here for you. We want to make this better um so that you're having a better outcome and experience with secure calf. Um our goal is that patients have the best outcomes. Uh if you joined, you joined cuz maybe there was a burning question or because your sales rep asked you to. Either way, we're glad you're here to, with us. I want to make sure we've answered your questions and that you're satisfied with our session today. We will be holding another one in about four to six weeks. Look for promotional information, both on LinkedIn, YouTube, or LinkedIn, Facebook, um, through SecureCath and Eloquest sites. Um, we'll be posting and sharing that we're having another one of these open forum sessions. Um, likely um, at the end of September, we'll look to hold another one.